Whoa, I'm here. That was awful. Hey guys, it's G and Anthony, and we're here to do a spoiler free, spoiler free, spoiler review on Ant-Man and the Wasp. So spoiler review, uh, full spoilers, the whole deal. We saw it last night. Uh, we talked about it a bit on our live show. If you want to catch it, entertain facts on Instagram. What did you think? Right off the bat, let's go into some spoilers. The end credit scene had me like, oh snap. Because it ended where Infinity War was happening, or the snap was happening. So Ant-Man and the Wasp starts after Civil War, and it pretty much ends when Infinity War snapping happens and people are turning to dust. Um, I imagine at the time when Nick Fury was fading. However close to the glove it is, that's how quickly the... Maybe different the time things. zones. Maybe different time zones, who knows. And so that one was really cool, because he decided to go into the quantum, quantum realm, because Hank Pym's wife can now heal people with her hands. Um, really handy thing to have. And the thing that she can do is what helps heal Ghost, because Ghost has this weird... They, there was a lot of big scientific words in this that I don't remember, but her phasing was caused by something to do with the quantum realm when they were, when what? It was um, Hank Pym and Bill and then Ghost's dad that were working on experiments. Mm -hmm. Her powers really phased me. Uh, I think the only thing we could talk about in spoilers that we really care to talk about is the ending, I'm assuming. Well, okay, hold on. Before we get to the oh, ending, uh, it was good. Is it groundbreaking at all? No. It was mediocre. It was, it was about mediocre. Like it was about, about, yeah. It, it, was, it wasn't than as solo. good. It was way better. I thought it was way better than Solo. It was not as good as the first Ant-Man, because I think that's the best way to compare it to. Obviously better than Thor The Dark World, better than Iron Man 2. There's a lot of fun stuff in here, and it ended really tight. So the three things that were converging... It was too clustered. It was a clustered in the middle, and I think a lot of it had to do with Walton Goggins character, who was the bad guy, that like the, the human bad guy. I felt was unnecessary, totally unnecessary. So then the times when they were going at it, like when they were fighting him, and it was... Ghost trying to heal herself, which I thought was a great cause, which is why I gravitated a lot towards Ghost. I, I <laughs> hope she had more, uh, more screen time. I didn't it, care for her. I thought she was awesome. I thought she was great. I thought she, I liked her, like how the motives were relatable and we actually like felt bad for him or her. But I just, yeah, I didn't really care for her. Her performance was kind of weird. See, but her, but she was, I know she's supposed to be, I know she's supposed to be weird, but I just found it like, I felt she, the played, villains weren't threatening, I felt. No, but there was really no ultimate villain. It was the police. Thanos was the villain. Thanos is, will always be the villain. Um, they get Hank's wife back because of what happened. There was some weird stuff happening with the quantum realm of how she was able to get into Scott, Scott Lang's head and see through her eyes when she was younger. It was There was a lot of stuff there with interdimensions and going back in time and stuff, which obviously will play a lot to, in Avengers 4. Adding on to that, you said, the, you know, to play in time. Uh, she told Scott right before he went into the quantum realm in the post credit scene, mm. don't get stuck in any time vortex, vertex, vortexes. You know, uh, he is seen in Avengers 4's set photos back in time. Mm. So I'm guessing, uh, I saw a theory about this online that he's going to go into one of them and just go back in time somehow. Well, and, and I think the th what's behind Ant-Man and the Wasp, like everything to do with the quantum realm is really what's the most important out of this movie. I was going to say, Wasp was great. Yes. I thought that was like, I'm not saying nothing else was inconsequential because she it was, was still like, contained. It felt like her kind of, it felt like her movie. It was like a Batman versus Superman kind of deal mm -hmm. where it was all about Batman and mm -hmm. not about Superman. Mm -hmm. But this time it was Ant-Man and the Wasp and it was more about the Wasp and it was about Ant-Man. Yep. And we talked about it before, or I mentioned it on the show where it was just like, Ant-Man felt like he was just kind of moving along as we were moving along and commenting on things that I was coming, like that were, I was kind of bringing up and, he was just kind of there to crack some jokes. Some, not, the jokes didn't land as no, much. No, they did not land very well. Not, not in our theater. Not in our theater, but even Thanos just in general. Thanos got to our theater, though, because half the audience was gone, so. Okay, so let's, let's go back, let's go to the ending. So, yeah, good. Go check it out if you've already been invested. It's nice, lighthearted after Avengers 4, uh, or uh, after Avengers Infinity War. We have a thing about the ant at the end, the, the last credit scene, not the, not the one where they fade. I thought the second end credit scene was Garbage, because you guys both left, Nick and G both left, mm -hmm. so I was sitting there, and mm -hmm. I somehow recorded the thing, I don't know what happened, it was just on my phone somehow, but uh, I showed them to it, and they said, yeah, I'm glad I left, I'm like, yeah, I don't blame you, but then somebody commented saying, Ant-Man can talk to the ants, and right now, that ant, he could probably talk to him, so the ant could potentially come over and free him. Can he from there? Because for him to play the drums, I don't think it has anything to do with the fact that he's communicating well, with them. Because he's he's off he's August. out of house arrest, right? So mm -hmm. there's no need to have the the ant there playing the drums. But, but it's all in one day, I guess. So they didn't have time to kick the ant out. 
Maybe. Maybe the aunt was just chilling and the aunt itself learned how to play the drums and stuff. The aunt was doing his daily routine. Like, they programmed him to do it or something. They taught him to do it. But he wouldn't need to do it anymore, though. Cause they well, he didn't they... stop him, though. Oh, maybe. That's a good point. But he... No, because then the ant, when he was in the tub before, when Scott Alt came back for the last time, the ant was in the tub when his daughter came in, and then he was there. So obviously he made the ant shoe or shrunk well, he, it down to ant size. But the door wasn't fully open. Yeah, maybe. Go on. I, don't, I don't know. We're if spending too much time on this. Uh, yeah, I will say, though, I did really like the relationship between Scott and his daughter a lot. That was really good. It was really, some really cute sexual stuff. frustration between Hope and Scott was pretty intense. How are you segueing from what I said to what you said? <laughs> Relationships. What is the mat? No, though those are two different relationships. I don't know if I'm going to, the more I thought about it, the the less I'm putting on that Ant thing being the thing that's going to save him because he can communicate with him. I feel like he's going back him. in time somehow. That's what I think is going to happen. The other thing, again, from the first Ant-Man, he was able to use his regulator and get out. I don't so. think he has it though. I'm pretty sure he does. It's a new and improved suit. Then why they wouldn't would he... send him into the quantum realm without a new and improved but suit. But they're already there. It's just like simply pull him out. Yeah, but just in case, they wouldn't have a fail safe. Well, I guess this pull out game should be strong then. It's a very sexual episode. I'm cutting that out. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, that was our uh, quick uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp review. The females really stood out on this. I thought it was really... I thought they were definitely... Definitely. I said it. The standouts, they were great. Um, Wasp kicked a lot of ass. Ant-Man was just kind of... Booling. Yeah, he was just kind of chilling. He was nerfed. It's a decent addition. Yes. Nothing groundbreaking. The implications, again, way more important to Avengers 4 than the actual movie itself. Adding on, I saw a theory saying, since Captain Marvel is the next MCU movie and right. it's set in the 90s, right. what if Ant-Man shows up in her end credit scene back in the 90s? He could pretty much go anywhere if he's in the vortex. He didn't come here right now. Let's wait five seconds. He's not coming. So that's our review of Ant-Man and the wait, Wasp. Wait. Let us know if you've seen it in the comments below. We would love to hear from you. You can find me on Twitter at the F words G. You can email us at the F word podcast at gmail.com. Make sure you're following Entertained Facts. Um, we're also on IGTV right now. We post a lot of this, the YouTube stuff onto there into small little morsels. And obviously on the audio side, we've now gone onto Spotify. So Apple Podcasts, all those places. There's a, we're all like nine different audio places that we release the live show and everything like that for your listening pleasure if you don't want to look at us. I'm G. I'm Anthony. And we're out.